When I ask you to think of Australian icons, you may think of things like the Crocodile Hunter, Tim Tams, or the infamous Vegemite. However, Australia also has a global reputation for music, and some of our own music icons. Some of our most well-known acts include the likes of ACDC, In Excess, and more recently Flume. However, if you are a young kid in the late 90s slash early 2000s, it's quite likely that you remember another certain four-piece band. Known for their catchy choruses and their coloured skivvies, yes, the Wiggles have captured the attention of children everywhere for nearly 30 years. Don't believe me? Well, as of recording, they have produced over 55 albums, 60 videos, 10 TV series and numerous spin-off ventures. On average, they perform to around 1 million people per year and have sold over 27 million DVDs and 7 million CDs. This success culminated to its peak in 2009 when the group grossed over $45 million. It is very safe to say that the Wiggles have cemented themselves in the popular culture and have become Australian icons. Because of this, I think it's only fair for the tale of these legends to be talking about. That, and I've always loved the Wiggles, and making this video has brought me so much nostalgic joy. So, everybody, get ready to wiggle. This is The Wiggles, Australia's greatest rock band. The Wiggles were ultimately the brainchild of Anthony Field, also known as the Blue Wiggle. Anthony Field was born on the 8th of May 1963 to parents John and Marie Field. He was the youngest of seven children. During high school, Anthony, along with his brothers Paul and John, formed the pop rock band The Cockroaches in 1979. The band, which would later become the foundation for the development of the Wiggles, released their first single in 1980, entitled I Want a Leather Jacket. After a string of successful singles and several lineup changes, The Cockroaches released their self titled debut album in 1987. At this time, the lineup consisted of Paul Field on lead vocal, John and Anthony Field on guitar and vocals, Phil Robinson on bass, Tony Hanger on drums, and Jeff Fat on keyboards and organ. The Cockroach's music often was a mix of pop sensibilities with the stylings of 80s pop rock. The band's debut album went platinum and produced the hit song She's the One, which peaked at number 7 on the Australian music chart. In 1988, the band released their second album, Fingertips. Reportedly, the band was not pleased with the sound of the record, but toured heavily to support it despite this. Even with the somewhat critical failure of their sophomore album, the Cockroaches were still quite successful. According to Anthony, the band performed over 300 shows a year towards the end of the 1980s. In 1988, the band even performed at the World Expo 88 in Brisbane, to a crowd of roughly 92,000 people. In September 1988, Paul Field's daughter Bernadette tragically passed away at just eight months old due to SIDS. The band never fully recovered. Anthony left the cockroach shortly after, but would reunite with the band to record their two final studio efforts, Positive in 1991 and St. Patrick's Day 10am in 1994. The Cockroaches ultimately disbanded later that year. After the Cockroaches, Anthony was pushed to study teaching by his sister Colleen. Field would go on to study early childhood development at Macquarie University in Sydney. And it would be here when the Wiggles would be born. Mm -hmm. 
During his studies, Field became interested in children's music and the way it could be better used to educate young children. Due to this, Field sought to create an album of children's music inspired by the likes of popular children's program Play School. Field enlisted the help of fellow alumni Murray Cook and Philip Wilcher, former Cockroaches Brody and classmate Greg Page, and former bandmate Jeff Fat to record the album. The album, which was produced for around $400, offered a mix of nursery rhymes, traditional songs from various cultures, and original songs. Notable songs from this album were Rocker By Your Bear, Dorothy the Dinosaur, and Get Ready to Wiggle. The latter two of which were adapted from the Cockroaches songs Everybody Wiggle and It's Another Saturday Night. Field and Cook gave copies of the albums to the children they were teaching to see what effect the band's music had on its audience. One mother reported that her child listened to the song Dorothy the Dinosaur around 40 times. This combined with other positive reactions from local families gave the group the confidence to move forward with the project, eventually securing a distribution deal with ABC Music. Two music videos were filmed to promote the album. These were for the songs Get Ready to Wiggle and Dorothy the Dinosaur, with an alleged budget of only $500 for each clip. The music video for Dorothy the Dinosaur would be the first official appearance of the costume version of the character, which was created and voiced by Cook until 1995. Dorothy was the first of the Wiggly Friend characters and is arguably the most synonymous with the band and still appears in the Wiggles franchise currently. <laughs> Good gravy, that original Dorothy the Dinosaur costume is still in my nightmares. Despite being confident with the group, the ABC was somewhat skeptical of the project's commercial outlook, stating that even the most successful of children's acts are lucky to sell 3,000 units. Nevertheless, the album was released on the 11th of August 1991. And, well, the album exceeded all expectations, selling over 10,000 copies and becoming ARIA certified gold. The album was also a critical success. This success pushed the group further to continue their efforts. However, despite the fact that he contributed the most musically to the project, Wiltshire would leave the band shortly after the album's release, as he wanted to focus on his career as a composer. Due to this, the band's sound would pivot slightly and lean more heavily on a pop and rock sound. The Wiggles began touring locally shortly after the release of their first album, performing at childcare centres, birthday parties and community parks. The operation was quite grassroots in the early days, with Paige setting up the PA and Fat spooking Wiggles recordings and merch from the back of his van. Around this time, the Wiggles would begin to formulate their signature look. Hence, each wheel chose a coloured shirt which would be contrasted with a pair of black pants. Cook chose red, Paige chose yellow, Fat chose purple and Field chose green. However, he would ultimately settle on blue around 1996 as you not clashed with Dorothy the Dinosaur, who was also green. In 1992, the Wiggles would make their first appearance on a play school window segment. The band's second album was also released in 1992 and was notable for introducing Henry the Octopus into the Wiggles cast of characters. Henry was voiced by Fat and named after the cockroach's drummer Tony Henry. Subsequently, he enjoys drumming and dancing. In early 1993, the Wiggles would make their second taped appearance on the video ABC Kids Live in Concert. The band would continue to perform small shows and would go on to release their third album, Stories and Songs, The Adventures of Captain Feathersaw and the Friendly Pirate, in August 1993. The album would introduce the titular character, Captain Feathersaw, into the Wiggles cast of characters. Captain Feathersaw was conceived by Field after noticing how many young boys were interested in pirates. To make the character less threatening, he was given a sword made of feathers and would tickle people instead of hurt them. 
Due to this, the character is quite goofy, mischievous and joyful. The captain became a crowd favourite and is nowadays considered to be the honorary fifth wiggle by many. The character was originally portrayed by Anthony Field with occasional assistance from brothers Paul and John whenever Anthony and the captain needed to be on the screen or the stage at the same time. However, since 1996, Captain Feathersword has been primarily portrayed by opera singer and actor Paul Paddock. Also in 1993, the group would produce their first video release. The video was made for around $10,000 and was shot in an ABC studio over the course of several weeks. The video was directed by Philip Cullen and produced by the Wiggles themselves. Fat and Paige assisted with the constructions of the sets and the group called in favours from family and friends to help with the rest of the production. This was the beginning of the fast production workflow that the Wiggles became known for. With no real script or production schedule, the filming could be very loose and fast, enabling the group to create a 40 minute video in the same time it would take a major production company to create a 3 minute music video. This would also see the formation of the group's educational theory, which would focus on educating a child through action. The Wiggles have maintained that by speaking to children as their equals, they were able to connect to children easier than their peers. This was ultimately what made the band stand out. Only trouble is, we don't know where Dorothy the Dinosaur is. Do you know where she is? She's where? She's over there. Let's have a look over there. No, Dorothy's not here. She's where? Over that side. Let's have a look over there. No, Dorothy's not here. Are you sure you've seen Dorothy? You must be playing a trick on us. Oh, she's where? Behind Jeff. Jeff, they say she's behind you. I'll have a look then. No, Dorothy's not behind me. She is, Jeff. She really is. I'd better have another look then. See, I told you Dorothy's not. Oh! The 1993 video was entitled Wiggle Time and consisted of a compilation of songs from the band's first two albums, as well as a few originals, including the popular song Fruit Salad, which would not appear on an album until the following year. This video would also see the beginning of more significant input from Paul and John Field, who would go on to help write numerous songs for the band. The video was finally released in September 1993 to widespread success. Soon after this, Cookfield and Page quit their teaching jobs and along with that they used their previous experiences from the cockroaches to expand their recordings videos and live shows. Later, they would ask former Cockroaches bandmates John Field and Tony Henry to perform on both albums and at live shows. The group would eventually begin to hire a few more musicians to aid with the recording and touring. By 1994, the Wiggles were full time. The Wiggles would release their fourth album in 1994, entitled Yummy Yummy, with the accompanying video released on the 11th of September the same year. The album and video would follow a similar production timeline to that of the band's previous works, with many friends and family working on the project behind the scenes. The band also promoted the album with a national tour at small venues across Australia, the tour ran from January 1994 to January 1995. Yummy Yummy became notable for the debut of songs such as Hot Potato and Crunchy Munchy Honey Cakes. In 1995, The Wiggles would release their next album, Big Red Car. The accompanying video was released the same year, again on the 11th of September. Big Red Car was the first appearance of the Big Red Car. However, the original version was not glamorous and was essentially just a cardboard cutout on a prop steering wheel. Big Red Car was also notable for the debut of the character Wags the Dog. The character was voiced by Jeff Fat and later by Paul Field and Paul Paddock. Big Red Car was the most successful album for the Wiggles at this point, winning the 1995 ARIA Award for Best Children's Album, the first of many for the group. Just like the albums before it, the band would go on tour to promote the album. The tour spanned from July to December 1995. 
Segments from this tour were also recorded and can be seen at the end of the Wake Up Jeff video from the following year. During the end of this tour, Paul Paddock would join the group and material from the group's next album would be performed. Later in 1995 slash early 1996, the Wiggles would try to create their first TV series with the help of the ABC. However, this did not come to fruition with the group later deciding created differences between them and the ABC. According to the band, the ABC executives wanted to hire a professional screenwriting team for the series and wished for it to be more structured and traditional than the group's independent works. Due to this, the Wiggles were not to speak to the children directly, which the band believed went against their educational style. The network also wished for the Wiggles to get a more trendy look, as they believed it would better appeal to children. This look can be seen on rare promo videos for the original version of Wake Up Jeff. Jeez, no wonder why they had to dumb that look. They look like they're about to appear in the latest Kmart commercial. Because of this, and a complicated and lengthy production process, the group decided to shelf the series and re-record the Wake Up Jeff video in the Wheels usual style. I would personally consider 1996 to be a turning point for the Wiggles. The band released their sixth album, Wake Up Jeff, on the 4th of April 1996. Its video version was released on the 12th of August 1996. This album would mark a shift in sound for the band. Electronic synth brass and strings were replaced for the real thing with the debut of musician Dominic Lindsay. Lindsay would provide most of the brass arrangements for the entirety of the Wiggles discography. This would make a dramatic impact on the overall sound of the group. The accompanying video's production seemingly followed the same timeline as all before it. However, Dorothy and Henry both received updates to their costumes. Thank you. The production crew also seems to have been expanded during this time. The Wiggles would use their 1996 Wake Up Jeff tour to promote the album. This would be their biggest tour yet. The band performed in large venues across Australia and New Zealand between mid to late 1996. One of these shows, specifically at the Seymour Centre in Sydney, was recorded. This became the group's first concert video entitled Wiggle Dance which was later released in June 1997. The band also recorded their first Christmas album in 1996, entitled Wiggly Wiggly Christmas, which released in December of the same year. It was planned that its accompanying video would be released a few months later, however the original video was scrapped and reshot, possibly to make time for the production of bigger projects. The video version of Wiggly Wiggly Christmas was finally released almost a year out from the album's original release in November 1997. At this time, the Wiggles were one of the hottest groups in Australia. However, it would be their next major project that would launch them into global stardom. Since the early days, the Wiggles along with screenwriter Greg Truman thought that the medium of film would be a great outlet for their Wiggly brand of fun. However, according to Page, The band had wanted to do a film for a few years, but our other commitments just didn't leave us the time to do more than express the desire. This all changed in mid-1996 when Jeff Fat's brother Hilton Fat came on board to help fund and produce the movie. The movie would enter pre-production around this time with a newly formed in-house production company, Gladysaurus Productions. The film would be exclusively distributed by 20th Century Fox. The film was directed by Dean Covell, who had directed the previous Wiggles videos Wake Up Jeff and Wiggle Dance. It was also written by Greg Truman and the Wiggles. The film was shot over five weeks and had an estimated budget of around $31 million, a huge step up from the small budget of $10,000 that was used to create the first video. According to the group, the aim of the film was to create a storybook-like musical feature that harkens back to a time when audiences allowed themselves to be swept away in the local cinema for a few hours on a Saturday afternoon. This was achieved in part by the quite frankly gorgeous production design from Andrew Horn and Deborah Shapiro. The Wiggles also got an upgraded brand and look. The cardboard version of the big red car was replaced with the version that is more reminiscent of what we see today. 
Yes, it was a fully functional car converted from a Volkswagen Beetle chassis. The Wiggles also received their signature custom skimmies and their iconic new logo. Seriously, show anybody under the age of 25 in this shape and I'm pretty sure they'll know what it is. Other production details for the film are scarce, but notably the Wiggles waived their performance fee in order to ensure that the movie would be as profitable as possible. This would be necessary as most theatres had a policy where children under the age of 5 would be admitted to the cinema for free. This just happened to be the film's target audience. Despite their efforts and positive critical reception, the film failed to make a profit after its theatrical release on the 17th of December 1997. However, the film eventually did turn a profit after it was released on video in Australia and America in 1998. Looking back on this, I was quite surprised. The movie had a ton of visual style and was relatively unique. I thought by revisiting this that my childhood memories might be ruined, but I can thankfully say that they weren't. This film was a huge achievement for the Wiggles, and after six years of building their Wiggly portfolio, they were ready to take on a new venture. After the release of the film, the Wiggles wanted to expand their outreach. As such, they self-produced their own 13-part television series, which began filming in late 1997 and wrapped early 1998. The distribution of the series was sold to the Seven Network and began broadcasting on Channel 7 twice a day on the 31st of July 1998. The series was simply entitled The Wiggles and had a segmented format. Each episode ran between 20 to 25 minutes and consisted of four distinct segments. These segments included the Wiggle House segment, which revolved around the adventures of the Wiggles themselves. This segment usually depicted a moral of some sort. There is also a Captain Feathersword segment that focuses on the captain, his crew and friends. This segment would usually provide some slapstick humour. Hangry the Octopus also had his own segment that featured stories as told with puppets. The final segment was known as Kaz the Cat and focused on a puppet cat character. However, this was scrapped during reruns of the show and was replaced by kindergarten play school like segments, which focused on preschoolers doing various activities. Each segment was separated by a song, resulting in three songs per episode. These song clips were mostly taken from the first two videos, Wiggle Time and Yummy Yummy, which had been re-recorded and re-released in the same year. However, some of them were taken from live recordings between 97 and 98, and some of them were re-recorded entirely to coincide with the new branding. The series also saw the video debut of the song Toot Toot Chugga Chugga Big Red Car, which was released on the band's album Toot Toot, in the beginning of 1998. Its accompanying video would also be released later in October. The series was directed by Martin Murphy, however the song segments were directed by both Dean Covell and Chisholm McTavish. Wiggles movie writer Greg Truman returns as head writer of the series with Paul Field and the Wiggles also sharing writing roles. Paul Field also served as the series producer and has held this role in all series since. I watched this series for the first time for the making of this video and once again I was really surprised by the production value of this show. It's low budget of course but there was a lot of colour in the production design and the physical props gave all the sets a dynamic feeling which I really appreciated. Sadly, this production style would become less favoured over time as CGI elements would slowly creep into Wiggles productions. Also in 1998, Paul Field was appointed as the manager of the Wiggles and was responsible for the sales, booking and promotion of the group. This came at just the right time as the band would want all hands on deck for what was to happen in the coming months. Fast forwarding to 1999, the Wiggles second series would debut. The series spanned 26 episodes and was solely directed by Chisholm McTavish, written by Dan Arioli and produced by the Wiggles and Paul Field. The series had a looser structure to that of the first, usually focusing around one major storyline, with songs and other segments spliced in. Song clips were once again taken from the 98 versions of Wiggle Time and Yummy Yummy, as well as the most recent release at the time, 
Toot Toot, which was re-edited and re-released in the same year in order to match aesthetically with the new series. Some clips were also taken from shows at the Sydney Entertainment Centre. The full recording of the show would later be released as The Wiggly Big Show on the 2nd of October 1999 in Australia. Additionally, some original clips were also shot for the series. In Australia, the series once again aired on Channel 7, as well as the newly launched Australian version of the Disney Channel in June of 1999. This was also the first series to air outside of Australia, actually having its premiere on the UK's GMTV on the 2nd of January 1999. The series was also the first to be broadcast in the USA, airing on Fox Family. It was also aired on the Disney Channel in the UK, Malaysia and Saudi Arabia. Due to the popularity of the series in the UK, the Wiggles toured the UK for the first time around the Easter of 1999. They then returned to the UK in August of the same year for a more extensive tour. Bueno Vista, the parent company of Disney, also acquired distribution rights to release Wiggles videos in the UK and began doing so in 1999 under the Disney video brand. Their first release being the 98 version of Wiggle Time in the March of 1999. The second series was massive in terms of the outreach of the band. I mean, they were now touring the UK, being broadcast around the world, and even started to get buzz in America. But that was just the beginning of the Wiggles global takeover. After the release of their film and two television series under their belts, the Wiggles were one of the most popular groups in Australia. It was now time to explore international opportunities. The first stop, the USA. In the latter part of September 1998, the Wiggles were invited to record a television concert special for the Disney Channel that had recently launched its Australian localization. So, with the support of Disney Australia and Qantas, the group were flown over to Disneyland in California. The special was eventually broadcast on the Disney Channel in Australia on the 20th of December 1998. This special also became the Wiggles' first American debut. Many people at the concert noticed how well the Wiggles translated over to the US, some of these being executives from Lyric Studios, now known as Hit Entertainment. Lyric Studios were a production company based in Texas and were primarily known for the Barney series. Yes. That Barney. Debbie Rice, who was the vice president of Lyric at the time, received a video from the Wiggles office in Australia. Rice then decided to see the band live in concert at Disneyland and recalls that There was an audience of American children mostly that had never seen the Wiggles before and they immediately got up and started dancing and interacting with the music. That's when I knew for sure that we had something that would be really big. Now sold on the group, Lyric Studios signed the Wiggles as their American promoter and distributor. In order to promote the group in America, Lyric released the remix of Wiggle Time and Yummy Yummy on the 12th of October 1999 as a small distribution between stores such as Blockbuster. Lyric also released the compilation album Let's Wiggle on that same day, which featured tracks from their first three albums as well as Yummy Yummy. This album would go on to be released in Australia one year later. With their material starting to creep into the US, the Wiggles began performing small shows around America, much like they did in Australia in the years prior. Cook even recounted in a 2019 interview with SBS's The Feed that We did a blockbuster parking lot in LA to about four people, one of which was the publicist. This was all quite ironic, as the group was starting to sell out arenas back in Australia. However, the band quickly gained traction when they were asked to be the support act for the Barney's Musical Castle Show in New York, where they performed to over 60,000 people on the 20th of January 2000. Back home, the Wiggles were continued to tour nationally and regionally around Australia and released their 10th album, It's a Wiggly Wiggly World, on the 20th of March 2000. Its companion video would be released on the 25th of July 2000. The album was the first Wiggles album to feature guest artists, 
As such, it featured many Australian artists, including Christina Nu and Slim Dusty. The Wiggles returned to the USA in April, again to support Barney on tour. Due to the rising popularity of the band in the US, Lyric Studios expanded their distribution efforts, releasing Wake Up Jeff on the 4th of April 2000 and then Wiggly Wiggly Christmas on the 24th of October 2000. Lyric also began reaching out to retail stores such as Walmart to begin stocking Wiggles videos to keep up with the demand. From September to November of 2000, the band returned to the US and would once again support Barney. They also began appearing at shopping centers around the US which only further boosted their popularity in America. They then returned to Australia and closed out 2000 with the You'll Be Wiggling Tour, named after their second Christmas album that would be released in Australia on the 20th of December 2000. Before the end of the year, the band announced that they were planning a tour of both the UK and their first headlining tour of America in 2001. To celebrate their 10th birthday, the Wiggles released their album Hoop De Doo It's A Wiggly Party on the 4th of April 2001 with its accompanying video being released on the 19th of June 2001. The album's leading single, Wiggly Party, was issued a few months prior to celebrate the group's anniversary. The Wiggles then toured the UK in April, then returned to Australia midway through the year to tour and promote the new album. They were then slated to tour around the US between September and November. However, the attacks on the 11th of September made this a tough decision. In spite of this, the Wiggles received messages from many people on their message boards asking them to continue the tour, and so they did just that. The US tour was incredibly successful, and the band was even made part of the 75th annual Macy's Day Parade in New York City. Anthony recalls, When we did the Macy's Parade, we asked our cast if anyone had any problem or if they were worried about the security, because it was a bit scary. You don't have to go in the parade, but everybody did. I'll never forget the emotion and the feeling of, you know, this has happened to us, but we're all going to get through this together. It had an incredible community spirit. The band's adventures across the world had garnered them much attention, and from the year 2000 to 2001, they had done shows in Australia, New Zealand, North America, the United Kingdom, and Hong Kong. Jeez, now I know why they were labelled the hardest working band of all time. Okay, so somehow, the Wiggles even found time to release a second video for You'll Be Wiggling, which was released on the 16th of October 2001. This was the last video directed by Chisholm McTavish and also marked an end to the Wiggles World era of branding that they had been using since 1999. The Wiggles finished 2001 the same way they always do, by touring Australia at the end of the year for Christmas. It's become tradition at this point. They also recorded one more album in 2001 to be released the following year. It would be one of the most iconic pieces of Australian media of all time. Oh man, I've been waiting for this one. In 2001, the Wiggles connected with Steve Irwin. Yeah, that one. To create an album focused around Australian animals. The album was released in Australia on the 4th of February 2002. The Wiggles and the Irwin family shared songwriting credits for many of the songs on the album. The accompanying video was shot on location at Australia Zoo in Queensland and also starred the Irwin family alongside the Wiggles. By this point, the Wiggly dancers were also introduced into the Wiggles productions. The accompanying video was released on the 8th of July 2002 in Australia and released alongside the album on the 3rd of September by Hit Entertainment in the US. This album is also notable as it contained backing vocals from one Sam Moran. More on him later. This video holds a special place in my heart as it's one of the first Wiggles videos that I can remember watching. And yeah, it also introduced me to the legend that is Steve Irwin. To this day, I still remember the snake song, the yard dance, and of course, the crocodile hunter theme, which I'm now just realizing is an adapted version of Wake Up Jeff. Anyway, this album will always be iconic to me, and I am clearly not the only one, as it has become one of the most beloved Wiggles videos. Earlier in 2002, 
Disney invited the Wiggles to head their new block of preschool programming, entitled Playhouse Disney. They appeared in a large amount of promotion for the block and even penned a song for it. Playhouse Disney, that's where I want to be. That's where we want to be. Playhouse Disney, imagine what we can learn. Other notable shows on the block included Bear in the Big Blue House and The Book of Pooh. The Wiggles began broadcasting on Playhouse Disney in the US from the 28th of January 2002, using both television series from the previous years. Having not produced a series for some time, it seemed like the perfect time to do so. The Wiggles returned to their old stomping grounds of the ABC in order to co-produce a third Wiggles series. The series entitled Lights, Camera, Action, Wiggles was directed by Nicholas Buffalo and written by the Wiggles. The series was formatted into distinct segments once again. A total of three songs as usual, with a variety of segments in between. The setup of the series was that the Wiggles were now operating their own television network, known as Network Wiggles, and therefore each segment was its own show. The segments were as follows. Network Wiggles News was a new segment hosted by Greg with Dorothy the Dinosaur featured as a field reporter and Captain Feathersword as a weatherman. Anthony's Workshop was a segment showcasing easy crafts for kids. Music with Murray was a segment that taught kids about different musical instruments and often featured special musical guests. Where's Jeff was a game show like segment where contestants, or in this case, other Wiggles characters would guess where Jeff was sleeping and then wake him up. A segment known as Wiggly Community Service Announcement was also used to separate other segments and would offer safety tips for children. Due to the segmented nature of the series, it could be filmed very quickly as the whole cast did not need to be together at one time for a given shoot. Subsequently, the series was shot and ready by late 2002. For the first time in a Wiggles television program, a lot of song clips will be recorded for the series. However, some clips were lifted from Wiggle Bay, which was a new album and video to be released on the premiere date of the series, as well as Woohoo Wiggly Gremlins, which was another album and video set to be released the following year. Both of these videos were also directed by Buffalo and shot around the same time as the series. The series originally ran on ABC Kids for 53 11-minute long episodes, consisting of two songs and two segments each. This version premiered on the 30th of September 2002. A second 22-minute version of the series was made for the Playhouse Disney block and ran for 26 episodes. This version contained three songs and three to four segments each. This version became the definitive version of the series and was rebroadcast on both the ABC and Playhouse Disney alongside the other Wiggle series. This series will always be my personal favourite as it was so unique for kids programming at the time and it is also the last Wiggle series that vividly sticks in my memory. The Wiggles were now becoming global icons and subsequently received a lot of requests for permission so that other children's entertainers could cover the Wiggles music in their own native language. A Brazilian entertainer, Zuxa, did just that and her videos featuring Wiggles music became very successful in Brazil. Okay, let's give this a watch and... Oh, no. No. No, hang on. What did they do to you, Henry? No, turn off. Turn off. Seeing the success in this market, the group collaborated with Disney to create more versions of the Wiggles for global markets. And as such, the Taiwanese Wiggles were formed in 2003 and released two albums and four videos which featured translated versions of some of the most iconic Wiggles songs. They also toured around Taiwan between 2003 to 2007. A second group, the Latin American Wiggles were formed in 2006 and was a localization designed for the Spanish market. One series was seemingly created and aired on the Spanish version of Playhouse Disney. A Japanese localization was also planned but was scrapped along with the whole effort of localization due to the international markets favoring of dubs of the original series. 
Hence, the Latin American wiggled and the Taiwanese wiggled, both disbanded at the end of 2006. Going on to 2003, the Wiggles continued to tour and create albums and videos. However, one high point in their career occurred this year. During the American leg of the Lights Camera Action Tour, the Wiggles astonishingly sold out the iconic Madison Square Garden a whopping 12 times, outselling the likes of The Strokes and Bruce Springsteen. This caught the Wiggles another wave of global media attention, with some branding them as bigger than the Beatles or the Beatles for kids. Hence, the Wiggles were nicknamed the Fab Four of Fun, a nickname that they have carried into the present. See, I told you they were rock stars. Throughout 2004 to 2006, the Wiggles continued their incredible work ethic, releasing multiple albums and videos each year. Paul Field began to direct all the Wiggles videos. He also directed the fourth and fifth Wiggles series, The Wiggles Show, which was once again co-produced by the ABC, Disney and The Wiggles, and aired throughout 2005 and 2006. The show was a lot more stripped back than the series before it, and mainly consisted of song clips from other releases, separated by different sketches in the Wiggle House and with other characters. Between these years, the Wiggles also collaborated with many other famous individuals, including Jimmy Barnes, Amanda Keller, Barry Williams of Brady Bunch fame, and Australian rock icon Ross Wilson. However, their biggest collaboration, probably to this day, would be with John Fogarty on the song Rocking Santa, released on the Wiggles' third Christmas album, Santa's Rocking, in 2004. It's Rockin' Santa, it's Rockin' Santa, it's Rockin' Santa, it's Rockin' Santa, well, it's Rockin' Santa, it's Rockin' Santa. Oh yes, I love rocking. During this period, the band were also requested to meet other celebrities after their shows. These including Jerry Seinfeld, John Travolta and Robert De Niro. Shaquille O'Neal even requested to play on stage at a concert as a Red Wiggle. His request was granted. The Wiggles also appeared on many TV shows throughout the world. Notable appearances include ones on NBC's Today Show, as well as CBS's The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. They also made cameos in other TV series, Neighbours and Kathy and Kim. From all of this, it was clear that the Wiggles had achieved a new level of global fame. During this time, the Wiggles were also made honorary doctors of the Australian Catholic University for recognition in their work regarding early childhood development. They also won an ARIA Outstanding Achievement Award around this time. In September 2005, the first Wiggles World theme park opened at Dreamworld on the Gold Coast in Queensland. The theme park was revolutionary for its time as it was one of the first to cater to children under the age of 5 and included rides that were designed with toddlers in mind. The theme park also sported dining options as well as a wiggle shop that sold merchandise which had also become quite a large operation at this point. The shop included toys, costumes, video games, clothing, and other accessories. You can even get Wiggles Band-Aids. Look, the park also offered appearances from the Wiggly Friends, and even the occasional performance from the Wiggles themselves. Eventually, Wiggles World theme parks began opening other locations, particularly around America, inside of Six Flags establishments. These opened in 2007, but were closed after just three years of operation in 2010. However, the original park at Dreamworld remains open and is frequently updated. It has even served as a filming location in more recent years. In early 2005, the Wiggles released their third concert video, Live Hot Potatoes, in both Australia and the US. The video was a recording of the Lights Camera Action Tour, once again at the Sydney Entertainment Centre on the 20th of December 2003. This video was quite unique, as the concert featured a live band including members such as longtime collaborator Dominic Lindsay, Wiggles backup singers and trumpet players Sam Moran and Craig Abercrombie, along with former cockroach Tony Henry. 
The video also inspired an Australian tour of the same name and ran throughout December 2005. The Wiggles also released a US exclusive concert video midway through the following year entitled Wiggle Dancing Live in the USA. This video was based on a tour of America that ran in 2005. In 2006, the Wiggles celebrated their 15th anniversary and after remakes of both Big Red Car and Wake Up Jeff began to release across the world, the group began to work on an entirely new album and video. The album Racing to the Rainbow was released on the 28th of August 2006 in Australia. Its accompanying video was released on the 7th of September the same year. This is a special release for the band as it was the first video that was entirely shot in HD. Greg Truman, writer of the Wiggles movie, also returned to pen the script of this video. The video had a runtime of around 90 minutes long and it was because of all of this that it was considered a spiritual successor to the Wiggles movie. This became the last video to be distributed by Hit Entertainment in the US, bringing an end to the seven year partnership that helped break the band globally. Starting in 2007, Wiggles video releases in the US were distributed by Warner Home Video, a subsidiary of Warner Brothers. The Wiggles continued to tour the world throughout 2006, however, Greg Page was absent from any of these shows around this time due to ill health a sign of what was to come. Greg Page began feeling unwell whilst performing all the way back in the late 90s. However, not much was thought of this. This problem worsened around 2003 as Page began to start experiencing major health problems, including fainting, severe tiredness and heart palpitations. He missed shows during this time and was understudied by Sam Moran who had been working as a dancer and backup vocalist in the group since the release of Toot Toot in 1998. Page failed to receive a diagnosis and returned to the Wiggles, continuing to perform throughout 2004 and 2005. Page became increasingly less active on stage and would have to sit down on the stage to continue performing because he simply didn't have anything left. Despite this, Page continued to perform with the Wiggles. During 2005, the mysterious condition continued to progress. Towards the end of 2005, this came to a head, resulting in Page missing most of his tour in the US, occurring in the first half of 2006. Moran recalls, there were times where he would run off stage midway through a song and indicate for me to take over because he really needed a break. There were also times where the overture was playing and he'd realise he couldn't go on and I'd have to quickly pull on the yellow skivvy and run out there to start the show. Page underwent a double hernia operation around this time which also meant that he was not available for shows and was again understudied by Moran. After his operation, Page was diagnosed with orthostatic intolerance, a rare condition that presents symptoms when standing upright caused by the pooling of blood. Symptoms of this condition include heart palpitations, an inability to concentrate, fainting, nausea, weakness, fatigue, and blackouts. Paul Field remembers witnessing some of these symptoms, stating, I remember seeing him at the Christmas party. My wife and I were walking about a hundred meters away from a man walking very slowly with a cane. He looked weak and slow like an old man, but it was Greg. It was clear that Page would no longer be able to meet his performing requirements due to his health. And after much speculation and decision making by all involved in the Wiggles, Greg Page officially retired from the Wiggles, being replaced by Sam Moran as the new Yellow Wiggle on the 29th of November 2006 to focus on his health. In a press release issued around this time, Page is quoted in saying, This emotional decision was one which was very difficult. As I have dedicated almost half my life to the Wiggles, and with a question mark over my health, I feel that this is the right decision. I'll miss the Wiggles and the other guys very much, as well as seeing all the children in the audiences that we perform in front of. I wish the guys continued success, and welcome Sam Moran with open arms to the Yellow Skivvy. I know he's a great performer, and is well equipped to be the Yellow Wiggle. Murray Cook also later stated, The four of us started from humble beginnings 15 years ago, and we've been through many adventures together. 
We will miss Greg as a superb singer, performer and songwriter, but mostly we'll miss him on the road as a friend and ally. This news shocked the world, being reported on national news around Australia and the US, as well as being reported in newspapers globally, most notably the front page of the New York Times. However, the show must go on, and the Racing to the Rainbow Tour continued around Australia, America and Europe between the 29th of November 2006 to the 30th of November 2007. Footage of Paige handing the yellow skivvy to Moran with an explanation of why he was leaving played at every show before the concert began. The Wiggles then welcomed Moran on stage as the new yellow wiggle before continuing with the concert. I actually attended this concert in 2006 when I was six. Greg was always my favourite so his departure was a massive shock to my six year old brain. So much so that I threw up shortly after the announcement. Remembering the atmosphere of that concert, I can remember that everybody was quite shocked and upset when Greg's departure was announced. But I also remember that Sam was welcomed with open arms. As soon as everything settled and to -to chugga chugga began, everything seemed fine. Sam Moran's first appearance as the official Yellow Wiggle was in the concert video Wiggle Dancing Live in Concert, which was a recording of the Racing to the Rainbow Tour on the 18th of December 2006 at the Sydney Entertainment Centre. It was released in early 2007. The video was originally meant to feature Paige, but due to his retirement, it was released with Moran instead. Before his departure, Paige recorded one last album, video and series with the group, which all had to be re-recorded and reshot. However, they were only delayed for a few months. The album, Getting Strong, would be released on the 3rd of May 2007, with its accompanying video following shortly after. Due to the replacement of Paige, the Wiggles sound shifted slightly to favour more of an operatic sound. Due to Moran's background as an opera singer, the subsequent Wiggles material also became more educationally focused, as the group wanted to return to their roots as childhood educators. This was accentuated by the release of the sixth television series, Wiggle and Learn, which premiered on the 12th of May 2008 on the ABC, before later being broadcast on Playhouse Disney in the US and UK, as well as Treehouse in Canada. The series followed a similar format to that of Series 2, however no concert clips or songs were shot exclusively for the series, unlike series prior. The series also followed the same release format as series 3, 4 and 5, with 11 minute versions airing on ABC and 22 minute versions airing everywhere else. Wiggle and Learn was also the only series to feature Moran and was the last series to air on Playhouse Disney as the contract between the Wiggles and Disney ended at the end of 2009, bringing a close to the 6 year relationship with Disney and the Wiggles. Despite this, the Wiggles had their most successful financial year in 2009, grossing a reported $45 million, outgrossing other acts such as ACDC and Kylie Minogue, and becoming the highest grossing Australian export of 2009. There it is. The Wiggles then kept recording and performing throughout 2009, 2010 and 2011 collaborating with the likes of Daryl Summers and Australian royalty Kylie Minogue. In 2011, the Wiggles were also inducted into the ARIA Hall of Fame, including both Moran and Paige as the Yellow Wiggle. The Wiggles also celebrated their 20th anniversary this year, and an exhibition of Wiggly history was opened at the Powerhouse Museum in Sydney to celebrate. However, all of that may have been slightly overshadowed by yet another health scare. In July of 2011, Jeff Fat blacked out in his car and almost ended up in a fatal car crash. Luckily, he survived, but the scare prompted him to get himself checked out. Fat was diagnosed with a heart condition and subsequently fitted with a pacemaker, resulting in him missing his US tour that year, the first tour he had ever missed in the history of the group. This scare made Fat realise that his age was starting to catch up with him, and at the age of 58, he knew that he could not be the Purple Wiggle forever. Meanwhile, at the end of 2011, Sam Moran's five-year contract had come to an end, and due to differences between Moran and the Wiggles, 
His contract was not renewed and he subsequently parted ways with the group. Despite this, both the Wiggles and Moran maintained that they parted ways on good terms. During this time, Greg Page was approached to join the Wiggles as Moran's temporary replacement until the position could be permanently filled. Page's health was at a point where he was able to perform again and wanting some closure on his time as Greg Wiggle, he signed on with a new contract ending in August of 2012. Page's comeback was announced in January 2012 and he began touring in March of the same year. In May, it was announced that Jeff, Murray and Greg would retire from the Wiggles at the end of the year, with Anthony Field staying on as part of a new generation of the group that would debut at the beginning of 2013. Due to this, Page's contract was extended until the end of 2012 so that he could retire with the other band members. On the 3rd of May 2012, the Wiggles released the album Surfer Jeff, its accompanying video was released on the 21st of June 2012. The album and video were recorded between 2011 and 2012. Moran's vocals were replaced by pages shortly after the release of the album. The video was shot on locations around the world, including Australia, Abu Dhabi, Scotland, England, Paris and Italy. These segments were shot in 2011 with segments featuring Paige being shot in 2012. The album and video feature cameos from longtime Wiggles collaborators as well as the new generation of Wiggles. However, they were yet to properly be introduced. Along with Cook, Fat and Paige, this was also seemingly the last studio album to prominently feature brass arrangements from Dominic Lindsay, as well as the last to feature backing vocals from the Wiggles in-house vocal group, The Manzillas, who provided backing vocals on most studio albums from around 2000. The Wiggles also began their final world tour in May 2012. Beginning on May 26, the Celebration Tour toured the USA, Europe and Australia. The two is set list spanned the entire 21 years of the Wiggles discography and featured some new songs that were performed by both generations of the group. The tour also had cameos from the three new Wiggles as Wiggly Dancers. A concert in Dublin, Ireland was recorded and released both as a video and a live album entitled Celebration. The album was released in late August 2012 with the video following in early September. Throughout the latter part of November 2012, the Wiggles began to tour Australia both regionally and nationally. They made their final television appearance in Sydney at Carols in the Domain on the 22nd of December 2012. The new generation of Wiggles were officially unveiled at this performance. The original lineup performed together for the last time on the 23rd of December at the Sydney Entertainment Centre. At the end of 2012, the new Wiggles joined the lineup alongside Anthony Field. They were Simon Price, the new Red Wiggle, who started working with the Wiggles as a vocalist in 2002. He then appeared as a Wiggly Gremlin in 2003 before performing as Ringo the Ringmaster and Gino the Genie in subsequent tours and videos. Lachlan Gillespie became the new Purple Wiggle but had previously worked as Captain Feathersword in the 2009 Dorothy the Dinosaur show and subsequent tours. Finally, Emma Watkins was tapped to replace Paige and become the first ever female Wiggle in the Australian group. Watkins had previously played a fairy in the aforementioned Dorothy show before being taken on the road with the Wiggles as a Wiggly Dancer in 2010. The new generation of Wiggles released their first album, Taking Off, on the 1st of February 2013, with its accompanying video being released later in March. Fat and Cook stayed behind the scenes with the Wiggles to aid in both the production of the album and the video. All three original members also make brief cameo appearances in the video. And since then, all three are still involved in the Wiggles to some extent. The new generation toured to promote the new material and found success in Australia. However, success began to dwindle internationally. International attention has begun to rise again in recent years thanks in part to the Emma spin-off series and other various online ventures. 
In the years since, the new generation of Wiggles have produced many more videos and albums, as well as produced four new TV series to be broadcast around the world. They have also toured the world, with their most recent tour now equating the size of the original group's tours circa 2004, with a new television series set to premiere in 2020, and rumours of a new Spanish version of the group, the Wiggles are as big as they have ever been. The Wiggles have continued to produce more content and to it to millions of children across the world. However, all four of the original Wiggles have also made time for other exciting adventures. In 2014, the Cockroaches reformed to celebrate the release of their catalogue on streaming services. They performed a few shows in pubs around Sydney. They have since reformed in multiple configurations over recent years sporadically performing gigs around Australia. Besides continuing to work with the Wiggles, Murray Cook joined the band The Soul Movers and has released two albums to great critical reception. In 2018, he also played Murray Wiggle in the DC Death Rage music video Like People. This is the greatest music video of all time. He also performed with the duo at the Splendor in the Grass Festival the same year. Greg Page continues to work in children's entertainment. He has developed multiple projects for television, including Butterscotch's Playground and Team Rescue, the latter of which has just been picked up by the ABC with more development to continue in the future. In 2017, he also made a cameo in Wiggly Wiggly Christmas, performing Go Santa Go with the current Wiggles as Greg Wiggle. Recently, Anthony Field and other musicians from the Wiggles, including Gillespie and Watkins, have started performing Australian rock and Irish-Scottish folk music as the unusual commoners in small venues around Australia. In 2016, the Wiggles celebrated their 25th anniversary by releasing The Best of the Wiggles on vinyl. The release was limited to a thousand copies, some of which were signed by the original members. The original lineup also reformed in 2016 as part of this celebration and performed a few 18 plus shows in both Sydney and Melbourne in select venues. One of the Melbourne shows was recorded and released as the Wiggles reunion show on digital platforms on the 25th of May 2018. A portion of the revenue from both the tour and the sale of the video were donated to Soldier On a charity aimed to support war veterans in Australia. Since 1991, the Wiggles have performed to millions of children each year, sold millions of albums and videos, and have continued to be incredibly hardworking. Above everything else, they have always put one thing first, that is their audience. They have always been committed to the education and betterment of children. I think nothing exemplifies this more than Murray's Aria speech from 2009 when he said, We're only partly joking when we say we're still teaching. Only now our classroom has 2,000 children rather than 20. The Wiggles have been a major icon in Australian culture and were integral to the development of myself as a child, and I'm sure they did the same for many others. Through the Wiggles, I was introduced to music, film, television and the internet. Hey, may not even be talking to you right now if I didn't watch Lights, Camera, Action as a kid. Recently, with the birth of my youngest brother, I've been able to reconnect with this part of my childhood and experience it on the other side. I have very much enjoyed singing and dancing with him to Wiggles music, both old and new. Suffice to say, we are both excited whenever they come to town. I could speak a lot more about why the Wiggles mean so much to me, but I think I'll just leave you with this quote from Murray. I really do think the Wiggles is about joy, about spreading joy. Well, you know, it's not a bad thing if you could do that. I think that was pretty good life's work. Your hands and you put them on your hips. This is fun! 
fingers and to the twist. What's next, Craig? It's a pirate party. Ahoy there, me hearties. I'm a pirate ship pulling a sword. Ahoy there, me hearties. It's my pirate party. Sing 